first question I have for you is, uh, what are the sustainability initiatives that GenPact is undertaking? Sure. So when you think about sustainability, there are two ways we look at it. One is as an organization, how can we become more sustainable? And second, how we help our clients. If you think about it, we are a professional services company, right? So we are not very environmentally, we don't have a huge environment footprint. Right? Our pollution is very less and all that. However, having said that, we have a net zero target. We have committed to net zero as per SBTI, the science-based target initiative. And we've been on this journey for more than 10, 12 years, um, where we report as per the global standards, GRI and whatnot, for more than 10 years now. And we've been on this journey one on environment, but also on social, because we are a people's business. So we've been focused heavily on diversity. For example, we are happy to report about 42% of our employee base is diverse. 50% of our board is diverse. So we look at it holistically from leadership to board. So that, in a nutshell, two broad things that we're doing. Of course, we do our you know, CSR activities aligned to climate, aligned to people and diversity. Right? So that's one. Next, we think about our clients, because that's really where we can have significantly more value, where we work with our clients in their sustainability journey, because some of them have in the business where there is a significantly higher sustainability footprint. So how can we apply principles of, let's say, supply chain, or procurement, or compliance, and help them in their sustainability journey is the second focus. Thank you, sir. Uh, so my next question is, uh, what are the kind of challenges have you come across uh, when uh, you've implemented initiatives at GenPact or for your clients? Yeah, sure. So I think there are two things I'd say. One is not first think about GenPact, right? Um, so let me give a specific example to bring this to life. So when you think of environment footprint, renewable energy is a very important uh, dimension. Yeah? But when you look at just within India, different states, not every state currently has renewable energy available as per the state level policies. Yeah? So even if you want to adopt or increase renewable energy, given certain availability or lack of availability, we are not able to move fast enough. Right? So therefore, policy structure to be not able to move faster becomes one challenge that comes up. Right? Second, more broadly, it's for us as well as for our client is really the challenge with respect to data. Right? Uh, especially what we see is many organizations, including ourselves, uh, have significant amount of their environment footprint with their supply chain or value chain, what is typically called a scope three, right? So even for us, it's more than 70% is scope three, and that is the case with a lot of our clients. So what then happens is you're trying to capture data from your suppliers and suppliers, supplier, and a lot of times you don't have access to the data, right? These are top through challenges that sort of comes to mind. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, with that, I come to my last question, and that is, how do you make sustainable practice a day-to-day -day activity for your employees? Sure. So, again, I talk about two specific actions, right? One is with respect to how do you bring our CSR or volunteering activities and bring it in alignment with environment and social actions. <clears throat> and very honestly, given we are a people's business, what you found is people who are actively involved in volunteering actually a lot more engaged and there we see higher retention rate. So it's a classic win-win. So we've aligned our CSR goals towards climate change. We do a lot of tree plantations, working on solar for government schools, so on and so forth. And also a lot of our social elements, right? For example, recently we've announced a joint uh, when, uh, initiative along with Unilever, Hindustan Unilever, where we are trying to work on small businesses owned by women and how can they become potentially suppliers to Unilever. So we are actually providing them guidance. Our employees are consulting for the uh, NGO, sorry, smaller companies to bring them up to speed. Right? So those are a couple of things that we do from a CSR standpoint. But the second part of it is really education, right? because this is a huge space where you're trying to now actually enable most of our employees to understand the ideas of sustainability and climate change through our courses. So we built something called a genome platform through which employees have access to content on this topic and they get really smarter about this. That's wonderful, sir. That's very encouraging uh, to know. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.